What are you doing? Where are you going? He, he, he likes to kind of butt in, you know that. What are you doing now? Oi. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go on. Shift. Right, welcome to another beer review with your host, um, Jonathan Brown and this little furry bugger. Right, we're going to, on this one, we're going to Burnley. Now, we're going to uh, Morehouse. And this is their, well, this is their, most probably, stop playing with the Uva. This, this, <laughs> this is most probably their most famous beer. I've never really had the, the um, had the opportunity to really give this one a go, to be honest. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to this because I've heard some good things about it. And it's from More Houses and it's their Pendle Witches Brew. Lovely chubbly. Coming in at 5.1% ABV. She looks a bit of a nasty old girl on there, doesn't she? There is an award, which also will um, relay to you in a minute. And there is a bit of narrative there. There is the barcode. There, I think that's the same award medal. And we're back here. Right. Pendle Witches Brew. Bom, 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 bom. And... Let's have a look. It's not really giving me anything. It says Brewed and Bottled in the UK. Morehouse is Brewery. The Brewery, Morehouse Street, Burnley. Burnley. Is that the proper accent? Um, the Brewing Industry uh, International Awards 1996. I, I don't know if it actually has won an award or whatever. But this is, you know, every brewer has, you know, their big selling ale. Or big seller, or you know, famous, famous sale. Go on, what are you doing? Like you do, get your ass. Like you do, you know. Fuller's have got London Pride. Um, Oi, <laughs> Fuller's got London Pride, you know, and you know, Black Sheep have got their wig well, if you want to call it that, and you know, Morehouse have got Pendle Witch. So let's crack her open before he starts wrecking the place and ruins his video for good. Like you do. So it's a plain crown. I got this from Marks and Spencer as well. Get down there, boys and girls. Marks and Spencer, great place for beers. And it's like a sweet biscuit coming off. Get your ass out of my bloody face. It's like a sweet biscuit coming off. It's kind of like um, a hint of caramel there, not much so. It's not really that much there, to be honest with you. But let's pour out, not we do. So she's come out like a gold, like a hazy, hazy gold colour there. Let's give her a swell. Give her a good old swell. Get the aromas going. It's come alive a little bit. I'm actually, it's funny because picking up a hint of marzipan, only a slight hint of it, it's, it's there. It's, there's like a marzipan melon. Maybe a bit of sauercrest there as well in the background. It's something like a marzipan. Definitely. Definitely like a marzipan. Oh. This marzipan, maybe you go into a greengrocer's, it's got that kind of like smell where the radishes are, if that makes sense. There's a smell to them. Well, I think there is. Reminds me of that. So let's pop her up, like you do. And she's, she's looking really nice, I must admit. Looking quality, quality beer. And there she goes. So I think it's bottle conditioned. Um, if she isn't, murder me in the comments. Beautiful, hazy, golden colour. Lovely looking head on it. Um, carbonation, hardly any. Oh, one little trickle of bubbles there. 
Um, I don't actually I think it is filtered. I can't see any sediment. So I'm looking forward to this, so cheers. Mmm. It's okay. Um a little bit of burnt toast. There is like a like a savoury feel to it. Um like a like a cracker or um cracker wheat kind of thing going on. Um with the burntness of it. There's hardly any fruitness there. I was expecting like a fruit there, but it's not there. It's definitely a savoury beer. It isn't sweet. You get the toastness there. The, the, you know, the cracker is there. There's a hot hint of grainness. I think there is a slight pear there in the background, but I couldn't really put my finger on it at the beginning. Um... Mouthfeel itself, it's really nice. It's quite um, full-bodied in flavour. Um, it doesn't, you don't get any watery diluteness to it. You sometimes do with beers when you feel feels a bit watery in the mouth. Um, it just feels a, a wholesome, good, solid beer. Um, and actually, I, I am surprised by it. I, I thought it's going to be for some reason. I thought it was going to be a bit more fruity. I don't know what it says. It says bit bit of sweet crispness. There is a slight crispness. I got to agree with that. Um, it is refreshing though. It you know it's it's one of them beers which when you're drinking and drinking, it starts to um, suck at your mouth, and you end up you know not having much saliva in your mouth. It's it's like that. Um, would I have this one again? Yes, definitely. I think this one's a really nice beer. Um, I would like to try it on cask and see what it's like. Um, as I'm in the northeast of England, Morehouse's beers are they're quite hot, you know, they, they don't pop up much. Um, I think I oh, didn't I have the Black Cat Reserve just after Christmas. That weren't bad either. But this is really nice. I have to go in one more time. Hmm, excellent. It's you know, nice savoury golden beer, um, full of flavour. Nice smooth finish. A um, little bit crisp. There's a crispy element there. Just really nice. Um, and so, boys and girls, got to highly recommend that one. Morehouse's Pendle Witch's Brew. Um, I might be behind the times. I think everybody else is out, out there has had it. I know I think most of the beer tubers out there have had it, apart from me. So Pendle Witch's Brew, more hat for Morehouse. Give this one a go. I think B and N do it and all. Thanks for watching this review. Please subscribe, and I and I apologise for my furry friend here interrupting me. See you on my next one.